welcome to New Movies and How. I'm Chris Geiger. I'm LaCroix Scott, and today we are reviewing Daisy and the Six. I didn't know it was like a novel. I didn't know it was adapted. What I knew, I was like leaving from work one day and saw a poster on Canal Street and was like, oh, this is interesting. And then I went home and I saw it on Amazon Prime. So, like, what drew you to it? If I think because, you know, I don't like drama and I don't like romance stuff. And I was just curious to see what would happen. Like, what kind of format this movie was in? Like, was it going to be a biopic or, you know, whatever? And I had no clue going in. I just saw that it was promoted on Amazon Prime and obviously they did a good job with their out of home marketing if I was walking down Canal Street I saw a poster but for you I mean you are you are subjected to a lot of promotional material about movies and different types you know audiovisual media so like I'm surprised that this stood out to you as something you like attractive because you don't really like dramas or romances as a genre they're not your preferred yeah I just started watching like the first episode and I was like oh great this is gonna be drama <laughs> <laughs> but you kept because watching. it was like positioned as like oh this is a band broke up and I was like oh okay and then I'm like oh great it's gonna be like a novel you know romance about like how the lead singer like breaks up the band and uh, yeah <laughs> what about you but wait, the, so you kept watching though? Like you didn't just abort after a first episode? I did because I think that they added, like I actually think that they did a good job of capturing kind of the band and their kind of ups and downs as they got started in parallel with kind of like Daisy's trajectory. So it wasn't just her story. It was their story as well as uh, the story of like the record executive that found them, who was part of like a a, a band in in itself, and then the the R and B singer and like her journey. So it was all these journeys, and I'm like, okay, now I'm invested because it's not just one person's quote unquote struggle. Sure. Um, it was more like a 360 picture. I had seen this advertised a lot on Amazon mm. Prime and at various other places. It looked interesting, but not. I didn't. It wasn't anything I was going to devote a ton of time to. I think I saw an article that said maybe it was loosely based on Fleetwood Mac. Oh, hmm. I don't know the Fleetwood Mac story very well. I honestly, so I can't tell you if that's true or not. But I loved everything she wore. Really, everything, oh, yeah. everyone wore. All the women in that, uh, in the series, like, awesome. And I like Riley Kehoe. I mm -hmm. haven't seen her in very many things. I saw her in Azola, and she was awesome in that. And uh, she was in the house that Jack built. She plays his girl, the, the sort of girlfriend relationship that he has for, like, five minutes in the middle. She was in some like horror movie that I watched during the pandemic. I think it's called The Cabin. Oh, okay. And that's about it. That's all that I know her from, other than being like Elvis's granddaughter. I was pulled in by her, really. And then Sam Clap is it Claflin? He looks yeah. so familiar, but I I looked him up and I I don't I think I've seen any of the things he's in. Oh, uh, for me he stood out like he, that he was in the hunger games yeah i didn't watch that <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> well um, they show that like on you know how like if movies come out like opening weekend or even like the subsequent weekend they show films on like sci-fi and tbs and mm. whatever mm -hmm. of actors who are also in these films so mm. it's like kind of a reminder of like oh that person has a film out right now you should go and watch it and so I think around that time they started re-showing the Hunger Games and I'm like oh that's where he's from oh all right but he yeah he looks very familiar just I don't know out in the universe and then of course you were watching it so I was like okay I'll I'll watch it it is kind of something that you can have on in the 
background. Yeah, that's kind of how I watched it. <laughs> because a lot of it is them singing. And I that that is not moving the plot forward for the most part. So you can, you know, they could have also made this maybe just eight episodes. If you I agree. I really, it was one of those things of like, yes, it's on in the background. Like, I was like, oh, you know, some things could have been cut short. Some scenes were a little like dark. So I wasn't, I couldn't see a lot. And some of, yeah, some of the plot, some plot lines ran a little longer than expected, especially when you're trying to understand and put together like why did the film begin or you know why did the series begin the way that it did it's like there has to be something that you know this is for mm -hmm. but i liked it overall i thought it was entertaining and uh, the acting was good let's uh, go to the slides i put this one a little bit higher than you which is unusual yeah. <laughs> raider's choice i gave it a little bit higher than you did story higher i do feel like in the universe right now, I'm seeing a lot of movies about unrequited love. Mm -hmm. And this, like, there's a new movie coming out called Past Lives. It's a, I think it's a Korean movie, but it's basically, oh, yeah. yeah. And that looks really good. But also it's about, like, this long, like, relationship coming back together after 20-some years and I, I just feel like I'm seeing a lot of that. Lately, we just talked about Bo is Afraid, you know, in that he has been pining away for this woman, for this girl that he met once, but years and years ago, and he still keeps her picture, and then she comes back into his life, and like it just seems like that, I don't know if, as a society, we are particularly open to, to those types of stories right now, and why that would be, versus in the in the past 10 years ago when I didn't feel like there were a lot of these stories going on really think that it is telling especially after a pandemic right mm. so it's like we've been locked down and a lot of people are trying to understand or you know try to reconnect with people who they've probably had previous relationships with and I also think that as people get older they try to figure out like you know was there a connection back then with people of our past or growing up and it's interesting because like in both scenarios with past lives and even in the, with this film or series, it doesn't seem like so. Well, there wasn't social media in the seventies, but like, <laughs> but like people aren't, are doing more than just, um, you know, finding people on social media. It's, you know, meeting up for a coffee or, you know, reconnecting on, anniversary things like concerts or movies or music and yeah i think that that's probably going to be a growing trend and maybe that's the trend for 2023 it's like we're at the end of the pandemic kind of but it's like well what happened if you know what happened to this person and you know we should connect right right i don't know that, uh, that's a good point. I feel like there are definitely, those stories have been out there for a long time. That's true. Um, but but now we actually have a way to find people that we lost touch with years and years and years ago. Yeah. I feel like this film was like, I, I've never seen a notebook. I can imagine it's something like this. Um, That's true. The notebook is kind of like that. I mean, this was not in my genre wheelhouse whatsoever. Um, did I take joy in watching this? It was okay. <laughs> I just don't like that feeling of like, you know, what happens if what if? It's like, it's clear that there were two people on just different trajectories that were put together to create something really cool. It wasn't just, I guess, they're not damaged people, but it's just a very good holistic way of showing you know all facets facets of people like everybody has their faults everybody's trying to do their best and they're put in a situation with daisy jones and uh this band and the band's lead singer where you know there are going to be hostilities at the beginning when people bring you in to to do things and don't really give you clear direction but you have to just work it out and you have to make something special that's pretty timely because of the music industry so i like the 
progression where it shows like they they failed they they made it and then they they're out of the loop because it becomes the early a late 70s early 80s and the music tastes change you don't really see i guess you get like i feel like with a lot of music series and and, and movies they kind of gloss over kind of the the lows and the highs and they only show you like the most dynamic pieces of everybody gelling together and everything working the relationship with camilla and yeah. daisy and the relationship with camilla and uh now i've forgotten his name the sam yeah, I, I like that dynamic and that he thought he was hiding all of his flaws from her like that he was working so hard to not be himself and she was just like i i know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i did like the storyline with terry price and I loved Timothy Olfant in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was great. As the manager? Yeah. He was, like, he was probably, he's probably like the most, um, I don't want to say like decorated, but he was basically like, in terms of star power, he had the most and he did the least amount of work. <laughs> <laughs> he had like three or four scenes. But he was great in all of them. Uh, That's true. Yeah. I think from a comic perspective, like it was just like, he just very much embodied that sort of tortured tour manager, but there's no other job that he could do. Like he just, that was it. It was his, it was his love affair of yeah, like the unrequited love affair, I guess. Oh, I was going to say the soundtrack, we both gave it two. You would think that we would both give that higher, you know what I mean? Like I there was one song, it was the, we can make a good thing bad that became yeah. kind of the anthem of the of the series but honestly I, other than that i couldn't tell you any of the other songs same i it, nothing stuck with me it wasn't a like that thing you do type of situation right. there were no earworms with this the songs that they played at least for me I think that what I liked the most about this wasn't particularly like the acting or anything. It is definitely like the costumes and the aesthetic, like what was going on? Like Terry's house, like amazing. Like the cars, like the fact that, you know, just these guys from Pittsburgh just decided to move across country in their little like Volkswagen, go to Timothy Oliphant's house and be like, oh yeah, you talked to us once and said that you'd manage us. And now we're here. And he's just like, well, why are you going to be here? <laughs> and the fact that people did that was, is like crazy. You have one conversation with somebody and then it's like, oh yeah, so I'm here now and I'm, I want to make it. And it's like, okay, great. Well, you're going to have to play at this bar for like a couple years until you actually make it. I like seeing that play out. Like I, I like, that's what I liked about like licorice pizza and like Paul Thomas Anderson films like all these like very nostalgic films of a particular time or just, you know, I like that. It's like, oh, that's what people did. I think people still do in a different way. I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know that many people who do that anymore though. Like they'll reach out on social media, they'll send an email and if they can't get through via email, then they just give up. Like, I think that sort of like, drive to go someplace and pursue like your dream in a physical way proactive mm -hmm. way I don't know if that's there as much as it used to be some people still have it of course but yeah I don't think I don't I don't think it's as prevalent I did think of you though as I was watching this and I thought oh my god La must love the California yes like <laughs> ness of the scenes that you know where they they have that little house that they rented and like, oh my gosh yes yeah. so when they were in the canyon and I'm like oh and they said like sixteen thousand dollars and I was like this is insane like right now that would be worth like millions of dollars you know they just stumbled upon it you know what I mean and then just seeing like the streets of Hollywood at the time and it's like oh the troubadour it's like I've been there once I've like walked by there yeah no I definitely thought of you as that was happening I was like oh my Laquamas love this show. What a time. I know, right? Do you have anything to plug in this episode? 
Uh, so lots of fun things coming with Super Mario Brothers, Chevalier, Air, I still have to see, uh, Renfield, I have to see. Wait, did you see Renfield? Wednesday. Oh, so. That's spinning gold. Are you going to see that? Probably not. Mm-hmm. That's surprising. I, want I thought to. you would see that. Oh, but I got like spoiled by a review of somebody that I respect. I wanted to see paint and that was only out in theaters for a hot second. Oh, it's come and gone already. It has come and gone. What? Yeah. That's so bizarre. I wonder what happened. I don't know. It came out two weeks ago. Last week, I was trying to find a late week showing. Couldn't find it. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Maybe it's on streaming soon. I hope so. It looked like it would be funny. Yeah, I I kept I see a lot of Instagram ads for it. So I assume that, you know, it would be kind of like a late or April, early May movie. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, maybe they'll release it. I don't know. I do want to see Chevalier. The even if I mean I'm not super into like classical music, but I do you like the costumes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Same. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like very Marie Antoinette. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess she makes an appearance in it. So yeah, I do want to see that. I want to see the Covenant. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I feel like that might be a little bit formulaic. Yeah. But still, I want to see it. Well, um, just the storytelling is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I do think there's some good stuff coming out this. Uh, past lives that's not coming out until june i think um, oh wow you know what i think there was a screening for that focus group screening like late last year oh and i couldn't make it i know at amc it says june mm. yes and if you haven't seen a thousand and one that was good i know it's a drama um yeah so you, but i do need to see it because you live in new york I think you would enjoy that part of it because you see these amazing just city views of what New York in the 70s, 80s was like. And it's it's great. We were watching it and they flashed up image of Metropolitan Hospital, which is a block away from my apartment. And so I looked at Dax and I was like, that's Metropolitan Hospital. <laughs> You're like, were we around when they were filming? <laughs> Um, and it largely looks the same as it does right this minute. So uh, not a lot of changes since then uh, for that building. Anyway, the sign is a little bit different. All right. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time.